Howdy Tubers, welcome back to the Zach Life. So I've been asked about a million questions uh, regarding sort of the financial aspect of the oil industry. And I'd like to put together a video series, I am putting together a video series, this is the first video, to explain a lot of that. I get asked questions like, I've got a bunch of yellow note, yellow notepad notes here. Sometimes these scripted videos are really more of a pain to do than the unscripted ones because I can just walk around with a camera in my job and it'll say, hey, look at this and talk about what comes to my mind. Anyway, tangent there. <clears throat> I'm looking down because I've got some notes here. I get asked questions uh, like, how do you buy an oil lease? How do you sell an oil lease? Why is it called an oil lease? Are you actually leasing anything? Uh, is an oil lease the same as an oil well? How much money do I make? How do you, uh, how, how do I sell oil? How do I uh, exchange a physical barrel of oil for money? Uh, where does it go? Does it turn into gasoline? I get asked the question often, when I sell a barrel of oil, how much do I get paid per barrel? And most people asking these questions don't realize how intertwined all of these questions are. I picked these out because they're all quite intermingled. And, uh, and they don't understand why I can't just say, well, I make $80 per barrel or $70 per barrel or whatever. Uh, it's extremely complicated. Now, this uh, video series should explain it. Once the video series is done, you'll say, I understand. Uh, and it'll be quite clear how much money I make per barrel. Uh, but it's not something I can just answer because that depends on, on many, many things. Anyway, I'm going to put this uh, series together. This first one's going to be about oil leases. The second one's going to be about... Uh, the way I exchange a truckload of oil for an actual check. Uh, the third will be about how the price of oil works, what, what relates it one to the other. Uh, the fourth is sort of going to be my business model, uh, at least our business model. We've been in business for 70 something years. Um, and the last one is going to be a, a, a video about government regulation, over regulation, uh, why Biden, at least in some aspect, is responsible for the higher price of crude oil. Um, what I hate about liberals <laughs> if you're a liberal and that triggers you and you're like I'm never gonna watch any of your videos again don't worry about leaving that in the comments I don't care just go away if you're apolitical and you don't want to hear anything about politics go watch something else my channel my politics my way now if you're a liberal with half a brain <clears throat> I think you should watch it because you uh, probably would come away with a different perspective after the video than you would going in we can have different ideologies and still get along so i got a little bit of a disclaimer here. Take this information as entertainment only. Um, if you're going to buy an oil well, an oil lease, or anything like that, you need a lawyer. You need to find a good oil and gas lawyer. It's the best thousand bucks you'll spend on the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to hit the high spots, but it's, it's quite a bit more complicated even than I'm going to be able to get into in this video. There's a lot to it. Even me, as experienced as I am in buying and selling and owning stuff like this, um, I have got a good lawyer. Unfortunately, the, the one I've used the most has got uh, colon cancer pretty bad. He's young. He's maybe 40. I'm maybe late 30s. I don't know. Anyway, bad deal. But you need a good oil and gas lawyer. Take this as entertainment value only. Um, also, my Instagram. You ought to check my Instagram out if you're an Instagrammer. I don't use it a lot, but it's, it's going to end up being a good way for me to sort of get daily parts of my life to y'all that are interested in it pictures of stuff there's a lot of things i do daily that doesn't really uh make a video well but they're a good still picture you know you know something stupid and <laughs> take it to click you know <clears throat> that's easier than putting putting a video together um but i'll put a link down there it's the underscore zach underscore life i think or something like that if i don't forget i'll put a link down there in the in the description i was watching the intro on this thing i don't know why my air conditioner, the, the return air from my air conditioner is just right there. It's not that loud in here. For some reason, it's like as loud as me talking. Anyway, I turned it off. It'll be off for the rest of the video if I don't get hot. Um, so what's an oil lease? What is an actual oil lease? Why is it called an oil lease? Uh, is it an oil well? Is it a set of wells? Is it a property? Is it a set of tank batteries? Uh, what is it? Actually, an oil lease is none of these. An oil lease is nothing except a piece of paper. It's kept at the courthouse. It's a legal binding contract between two parties. So it's called an oil lease because that's exactly what it is. It's a person like me that's an operator that wants to operate the wells, produce the wells, or drill wells, and between someone that owns the mineral rights, someone that's actually got the ownership of the subsurface minerals. And so an oil lease is just that. It's a lease of the rights to produce petroleum. So inside this lease, inside this legal binding contract, 
uh, is any kind of term that you could think of. I guess that's probably not true. There's some things you couldn't put in it. But for the most part, about anything you can dream of can be a term in this contract. This can be things like uh, how long the lease lasts. You know, it can be strictly for a, a set of dates, a set of years. You know, you've got five years to drill these, you know, drill as many wells as you want. At five years, the lease lapses, uh, and it's no longer yours. You know, at five years, you'll have to plug everything. These are uncommon, but they do exist. Uh, most leases go something like a term of one year. Uh, you'll pay X amount of dollars per acre uh, to lease the property, uh, and the lease is good for one year. Uh, at the end of that year, the initial term is no longer valid, and the lease continues as written as long as oil is produced in paying quantities. That's usually a, uh, a term that's given. So and that what that means legally is that the lease lasts forever as long as you produce oil. This is pretty common. You can also have things like drilling commitments. You have to drill X amount of wells in the first couple of years, or you have to drill a well a year, or you have to drill two wells a year, or you gotta drill 10 wells a decade. Uh, you know, you can have any term you want there. And if, if any of those any of those terms, if you are not, uh, if you don't satisfy any of those terms, like you don't produce oil for you know x amount of months or x amount of years, or you're you know don't satisfy your drilling commitments, you have to drill a well a year and you go a year and don't drill a well. If any of these terms are not met, uh, your lease expires. If you don't satisfy the requirements of that lease, the lease can lapse, will lapse and it can be taken away from you. Now, <clears throat> I need to make this point, drive this point home, that the oil lease is only a piece of paper. It's only a contract. It doesn't have anything to do with the ownership of the equipment. It doesn't automatically have anything to do with the ownership of the actual wells, of the, of the well bore. Uh, it only, for the most part, has got to do with the actual petroleum that's in the ground. So you can still own the well, but if you pump the well, the oil that comes out of it is not yours. Does that make sense? I know that's kind of complicated and kind of abstract, but the lease is just for the petroleum that's in the ground. That's not the actual ownership of the well bore. That's not the actual ownership of the equipment. Now, you can have in the lease written in terms that if the lease lapses, the mineral owner gets the equipment or the mineral owner gets the well bore if they want it or whatever. But for the most part, the lease is just a contract. It's just a piece of paper for the ability to produce the petroleum. It's not the actual ownership of any of the equipment. You can buy the surface equipment. You can buy the well bores. You can take responsibility for the well bores. But if you don't have that contract, if you don't have that lease with all the T's crossed, and all the I's dotted and everything right, you do not have an oil lease. All you got is a bunch of junk iron. So I wanted to show you this oil and gas lease. This is pretty interesting. This is an lease I used to own. I recently sold it, uh, dated the 25th of January 26th. This is an agreement made between this person, and I've, I have uh, blanked out their names. I don't want any kind of legal problems. This is still an active lease. I don't want y'all to know really where it's at or anything. I just want to use it as an example. Uh, but it's an agreement between these two people uh, that the mineral owner for consideration of ten dollars which hereby acknowledges and covenants an agreement here and after contains a part of the lease to be kept, paid, and performed is granted dismissed, leased, and let by those present present and does grant lease and to the lease for the sole purpose of mining and operating oil and gas laying pipelines building tanks power station structures and uh, to save and to take care of said products uh, it concerns a certain track in the land of a blank county in the state of Texas this gives a legal description of it and containing 290 acres uh, it's agreed that this lease shall remain in, remain in force for a term of five years from this date and as long thereafter as oil or gas or either of them is produced by said lands by the leasee. Meaning this lasts forever as long as the 
operator produces oil. In consideration for this, the lease agrees to deliver to the credit of the lesser free of cost in the pipeline which he may connect to his wells equal to one eighth of the part of all oil produced safe from the lease premises. Meaning he has he had to pay, I had to pay one eighth of the gross sale of the of the oil back to the uh, to the mineral owners. Second, this is the second term to pay one eighth of the proceeds monthly from the gas in each well where only gas is found. Uh, meaning what this means is is that of an oil well that makes a small amount of gas, the gas is basically free while is used off premises, meaning that if the well makes gas and the well is used on the premise, it's free. And the mineral owner to have free cost from any such well for all stoves and inside lights in the principal dwelling house on said land during the time of making his own connection at the well at his own risk, meaning that the landowner, which was the mineral owner that lived on the property, could use free gas that's produced by the wells to heat his house and to, which I thought this was really cool, to uh, use the gas for the lights in his house. His house had, had gas-powered lights. Uh, and the third term here is to pay for any gas produced from any well used off the premise. Described in paragraph 2, talking about this. Uh, for the time which gas shall be used, should, should Lisi desire to utilize case and head gas coming from oil wells upon the premise here I've described for the purpose of manufacturing gasoline, uh, the operator shall have the privilege of doing so by paying the lesser one-eighth of all the proceeds delivered from the sale of case and gas. He's talking about drip gasoline. Here, drip gas. Uh, if drip gas is made, he's welcome to use it elsewhere, but he's got to pay one-eighth of what it's worth back to the mineral owner. It's very straightforward. It's basically he owns one-eighth of all, of all, uh, all the products uh, that, that the lease makes except for any kind of casing head gas that's used on the premise. Uh, and down here, here's a term of the lease. If no well is commenced on the land before the first day of July 1926, the lease will terminate, meaning that the $10 you paid, all this agreement that this all ends if he doesn't drill a well by the first day of July, the not, of July 1926. Uh, at least terminates to both parties unless the lease owner before that date shall pay tender to the leaser to the leaser's credit of it gives a name of his bank in Lagrange, Texas or its successor which shall continue to the depository regardless of the change of ownership of the land I mean, if he sells the land he's still the mineral owner and wants to keep the keep the money the sum of $72.50 which shall operate as a rental and cover the privilege of deferring the commencement well for three months. So basically he's wanting $72.50 uh, every quarter if that they don't drill a well. Anyway, this would go on. This basically is just the first page of it, but this is effectively the end. Uh, they may have some more agreements to stuff like this on the next page. But basically, I wanted you just to see this and read through it. Like I said many times, it's just an agreement uh, between the mineral owner and the uh, operator. And uh, talks about, you know, the terms and whatnot and how long and what you've got to pay and, uh, and whatnot. So that's basically what an oil lease is. I use this one because it's so simple. You can tell it was a, a pre-printed form. You just fill the date out, put your name on it. You know, it was very, very cut and dry, very cookie cutter, uh, very simple to understand. Now, a lot of days, a lot of times now, there are a lot more to it than that, but that's the gist of what an oil lease is. Uh, this one, the only terms were basically you had to drill a well. Uh, it had to make oil and paint quantities after the one year or one year or three year, whatever it was. Um, and you had to give one eighth of the gross sale of the product back to the mineral owner very very simple as long as it had an oil well and as long as it made any oil at all in paying quantities which basically means any at all uh, the lease remained valid forever of course being signed in 1926 
Uh, it this, as I said, was a was a lease that I owned. I've sold it. I don't have it anymore. Uh, that's why I had a copy of it. Uh, you know, the lease has been has has been nearly a whole uh, century in uh, in its existence, and it's still valid. It's as valid today as it was as it was in 1926. Uh, when you sign an oil lease, when you lease minerals from you know from a person or a family or or whatever, uh, everything has got to be perfect. You've got to have every I dotted, every T crossed. Uh, you've got to get everybody on board. A lot of times, there's dozens of people. You know, it's been passed down generation to generation to generation. Uh, some pieces sold to people. Uh, for one, you've got to find all these people, which is really difficult in the first place. And then once you get these couple of dozen people. You've got to get them all on board uh, with terms of an oil lease, and this is this is a big problem. Uh, this is a uh, there's a there's a a um, a profession called a landman, and that's what landmen do is they find people and they get them to agree to, to leases, uh, and then you've got to prove ownership. You know you can't have someone you can't just take someone's word for it that they own this lease. You know you have to prove to yourself in the pipeline company. Uh, that the person that leased you this land that signed a contract with you is actually the owner of it or owns the percentage of it or whatnot. Anyway, that's one of the reasons you've got to have a good lawyer. So <clears throat> the guy in 1926 has got an oil lease now. He digs a well. The well makes some, makes some oil. He's got a valid time ticking lease. He's got it for five or six years. He decides he wants to sell it. How does it end up from being his to mine or to someone else's after I got rid of it? So there's a thing called an assignment, and it's in its very basic form, an assignment is just that. It assigns this oil lease, the rights from this lease, to someone else. And so in its basic form, uh, the person that originally leased this lease would assign his rights over to someone else. Now, one thing you've got to remember is that in this assignment, as I said, this actual lease is only a piece of paper. It does not grant ownership of the production of the actual uh, production equipment of the surface equipment. It does not give uh, ownership to the well bores. It is just the oil lease. So in that assignment, that assignment now is a legal binding document that's between the original person who leased the lease and the person that wants to buy it. And in that assignment, it can have any terms, any terms that you can imagine just like the original lease you can actually keep part of it he can only assign a percentage of it he can assign he can assign uh you know part of the working interest of it he can say you know you get the the lease but i want all the equipment you know he goes out there and keeps all the units or the rod lines or the you know whatever the telephone poles whatnot and i've seen often there'll be assignments uh that assign an oil and gas lease and they'll say in the lease uh, but there's this pump unit that's out there in the trees I want to keep that pump unit and so in that, uh, that assignment that unit does not go with it uh, another thing you that can can happen here is the thing called an overriding interest and so as I said this lease was originally a 7 8 lease meaning the person that uh, operated the lease had to give back to the mineral owners 1 8th of the of the gross sales now <clears throat> there can be a thing called an overriding interest when you assign this lease you can actually put in the assignment that the person that's selling the lease gets to keep a percentage of it it's just like a royalty but it's called an override and this is pretty common especially today this has become a lot more common today um, you've got a lease like this it's a 7 8 lease you get 87 half percent of it and someone says I'll sell it to you I'll give it to you at a little bit cheaper price, but I want to keep that extra 7.5%. You only get 80% of it. This lease here, this one I sold, is just like that. I did it to the people that I sold it to. Uh, it was an agreement in the assignment. that The assignment only granted 80% of the lease. And so now, when these guys sell a truckload of oil, I get 7.5% of whatever that truckload of oil is worth. So anyway, when you say you bought an oil and gas lease, what that what you're saying is is you paid someone basically enough money that they wrote you an assignment to assign the uh, the ownership of that legal binding contract, that lease that's held at the courthouse, 
usually along with all the equipment that goes with it and there can be terms where he, you know he wants to keep something or whatnot uh, but you're paying him money to basically write you an assignment to assign that oil and gas lease uh, over to you. So I'd like to talk about these really, really old oil leases. And I've got quite a few of them, you know, leases that were signed in the early 20s. A lot of times they were extremely liberal leases. The, uh, what I mean by that is, is it allowed the oil companies to do basically anything they wanted to. Oftentimes this gives oil companies a bad rap. If you go back to that point in time, a lot of times, most of the time, the mineral owners and the surface owners were the same person. And if an oil company came in and wanted to dig a well on your property, for the most part, most people were excited. It was just crappy farmland out here. Nobody, nobody wanted anything to do with it. And, uh, and it was going to be a great opportunity for the mineral and landowner. A lot of times, the oil companies would negotiate a lease that wasn't necessarily the highest percentage. You know, they would leave the mineral owner and the landowner a little bit higher percentage of it instead of seven eighths. Uh, maybe give a few extra percentage points. Uh, perhaps pay a little bit more money for it. Uh, for in terms of lease, would give them rights to the, the, the water and the stock tanks to use to drill their wells. Uh, more rights to use the land. They could do things like build houses out there to house their their um, uh, you know their employees uh, they could you know build shops build barns you know they could do basically anything they wanted to with the land um, I've actually got a, an example of this which is a really really extreme example and uh, it's it's actually that that well that's the 70 year old oil well that still flows that thing has actually got a lease on it that it's only a 75 percent lease the 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 person that leased it to drill that well uh, in the 50s only kept three quarters of it he gave basically like gave an extra eighth of it to the mineral owner which was also the land owner and in the terms of that lease for basically that larger percentage uh, he had all these stipulations he wanted wrote out like he had rights to the groundwater he had rights to build houses and shops and barns out there to house his equipment he actually even went as to far, they had an agreement, you know, between them uh, that if they had to tear out any fences, he had a price per foot of fence. Uh, if, if the landowner had a barn and they wanted to drill a well in the middle of the barn, it gave the, the guy, the, the operator, the rights to tear the barn down at a price per square foot, which was probably big back then. It was all in 1950s dollars, and the oil company paid a lot more money for that because it was something that was a value. You know, they, they paid more money because they had more rights to use more of it out there. The problem with this is, as you move forward to today, and someone buys the land and builds a house out there, they don't understand that this contract that was made in contract back then with the landowner is still valid. Now, I'm not going to go and tear anybody's house down. I want to do my best to get along with everybody. But the problem is, is a person that's house that lives out there, by all legal reason, I, I could tear his house down by this contract because the person he bought the land from, or bought the land from a few pieces back, has an agreement with me that I can tear his house down for 1950s dollars, you know. For five dollars a square foot you go bulldoze his house of course i can't imagine that ever happening but that's one of the things that's really scary about these really old liberal leases uh, is that basically that place out there i mean i could go build a house out there on his property and there's nothing he could do about it it's all it's all you know <laughs> completely in this in this lease it's all completely in this contract you know it couldn't be you know there there's nothing he could do if if i wanted to go live out there with him basically Anyway, that's one of the things that kind of gives these oil companies, can give oil companies a bad rap, uh, is by purchasing a lease like that and having all this power and control and the people that own the land don't understand that they, you know, the oil company paid a whole lot of extra money for it uh, to be able to do certain things, you know, and the, and the guy that owned the land thinking, this, this is never going to be anything but farmland out here. I'll never build a house. It don't matter if he lives here. I hope this clears some stuff up for a lot of y'all. I've had a lot of questions of how can you buy a lease? How does that work? How do you sell a lease? What is a lease? Uh, the person that asked me, you know, the many people that asked me, how much money do you get when you sell a barrel of oil? Well, it depends because sometimes I only own seven eighths of that barrel. Uh, sometimes I own as little as 71% of that barrel. It depends on the lease. It depends on the terms uh, and, 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 and whatnot as compared to how much of it I even own, uh, disregarding how much it actually is worth. 
Um, I plan on letting this video percolate for a while. I think it's going to be at least a good solid month. I'm going to leave it uh, before I start the next one. And the reason for that is, is the is the whole idea behind these is to uh, is to answer questions. And if you've got questions specifically about this, leave them all in the comments. I'm probably not going to, to specifically answer them in the comments, but I'm going to use those comments to uh, to work on the next video. That's like I say, the point behind all this. Um, hope that made sense. I hope I cleared some things up. I know it's been a bunch of FaceTime staring at my ugly face, but uh, I don't really know how else to do this. I guess I could put you some flowers I could hold up here or something. I don't know. Something else to look at. Put some pictures of some hot rods on it or something. But anyway, um, that's it. Like, share, subscribe. Go check out my Instagram and uh, leave lots of comments, lots of questions. Catch you on the next one.